Hi, welcome to Behind the Badge. I'm Chief Alan Rod Bell, the City of Scottsdale Police Department. With me is uh, Miss Chris Vassal, our community liaison. I like the miss part. Yeah. How are you guys? <laughs> Everybody good? Doing good? Yep. All right, summer's here. Temperature's off the charts. Uh, uh, everyone's, everyone's hot and bothered. Uh, be real careful out there, obviously, in the, in the yes. water with the kids. We've had some tragedies already this year. Yes. Uh, no matter how much you, you think you're watching, they're awfully fast. They are. We both have grandchildren. We know how we quick talk they, about that all the time. We know how quick they can be. <laughs> yes. So, you know, please pay attention. Yes. Uh, don't, you know, don't, don't be, don't, don't not pay attention even for a split second. Right. The most recent one was actually a family gathering or party, so, uh, in another jurisdiction. So, just, just be aware of the fact that they're, they're curious, they're hot, and they've got no clue. So. And, the, and they have no fear. No fear. I think that's probably why it happens. They have no fear of it. And, of course, just to slow down on the streets because the kids are playing outside. They're, they're on their bicycles and everything, too. So just the normal yeah. summer things. To and and I've for. seen photo enforcement out in front of two schools uh, this week, even though schools are closed. So, you know, we get the fact that schools are closed, but we are still concerned about speed in those zones. Obviously, they have to reduce speed because schools aren't open, but there are playgrounds there, there are, place, there are activities there, so yes. camps are going on mm -hmm. schools, and so it'd be yes. used for that. So it'd still be very mindful of, of young folks running around the communities. But and I think the last time we spoke, I think the cameras were off, but they are back on. So I think yes. we talked about them yes. being off until we figured out mm -hmm. something with the, was it the Attorney General? Attorney General made a decision, and uh, our vendor had to get into compliance. Correct. They got in compliance. Uh, that, Couple months ago now. All right, so we're and back so we're up back and everything up and just in case somebody didn't yeah. read this. And like I said, I saw the two, saw two of those boxes, the portable boxes, just okay. this week in front of schools. So please be careful for Absolutely. everyone's sake. Absolutely. Uh, we we have an interesting program today. In, we in do. the past, we've had all of our district commanders on at the same time. In fact, all of our operations folks at the same mm -hmm. time. And we really haven't had a chance to talk to anyone individually about their districts and and uh, and things that are going on in their communities. Right. And so this time we thought we'd bring back a couple of our youngest. Um, youngest, I really appreciate that. Our newest, our newest uh, our district newest. commanders, Correct. and uh, just so the audience knows, uh, we have four districts in the city of Scottsdale, mm -hmm. uh, and imagine it will be called uh, District One, Two, Three, and Four. How original! Uh, well, I made that up myself, <laughs> and so they've got some nicknames. We'll talk about that. Yes, but exactly. we have four district stations, and uh, District One uh, is at the Tempe border, up to the south side of, of Osborne. Right on McKellips. And, and McK we call it the McKellips station. Correct. And District Two goes from the north side of. Osborne up to the south side of McDonald. Correct. That's District 2, and that's also known as the Downtown District. Our Civic Center downtown, Station. Right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, District 3 goes from the north side of McDonald up to the south side of Cactus. Cactus. And District 3 is located up on Via Linda. That's the Via Linda Station. Right. And then uh, District 4 goes uh, north from the north side of Cactus all the way up to, to the Free. Keep going. Yeah, yeah it's the biggest keep going. district. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. Yeah. <laughs> and so we have two district commanders here to talk about their right. districts. I'm going to let you do the introduction. Well, thank you, Chief. Um, I'd like to welcome Commander Chris Hall. He thank is all, the commander at the District 3 station, which is the Via Linda station. Correct. And our newest commander, uh, Commander Joe LaDuke, with a L capital D for his dad. Um, <laughs> and uh, he's uh, the new commander at District 4. So welcome to our show. Thank welcome, you. Guys. Appreciate it. Great to have you. Thank so, you. Uh, so just as we can kind of explain a little bit about your background, guys, so the, the viewing audience can can see the quality of, and, and the depth of your experience, uh, so they can feel really comfortable with knowing you're in command of their neighborhoods. Chris, you want to start off for us? Sure, Chief. Uh, I've been with the city now for almost 22 years. I've uh, been district commander at the Villa in the district since uh, January of uh, what is it, 14. So almost three years now. So uh, right now we currently have about 83. Uh, patrol personnel working in that district at this time. And, and Chris is sporting a, a goatee, and <laughs> just for the viewing audience in case that, not a lot of people have talked about this. No, we but, haven't. But one of the things that we did in Scottsdale is um, for Special Olympics, mm -hmm. the law enforcement officer Torch Run uh, has an international conference every year. Last year it was in mm -hmm. Bahamas, and this year it's actually in Phoenix in September. Mm -hmm. And so we're doing, so we'll have law enforcement officers from all over the world, quite frankly, here in Phoenix, uh, working on uh, working with Special Olympics Arizona and, and National Special Olympics to look at ways that we can provide um, a great experience for our Special mm -hmm. Olympians. And to raise funds. Correct? And to raise funds. And so one of the things we did in Scottsdale was we created a license to grow a yes. beard. Yes. Uh, it only lasts for a couple months. Leah and I, we made pretty good pictures of that. You, don't you, did, you did a great job. <laughs> and, so, and so the guys are spouting uh, goatees, which they had to pay a premium 
to be able to do, and all the money went to Special Olympics Correct. Arizona. Absolutely. For like yeah. three months, I yeah. think. Yeah. For those yes. who have a little difficulty growing a beard, it gives them three months to grow well, it. I had one for like a couple of weeks. <laughs> it just got so my wife said, okay, enough. Enough, and, you're And gone. she remembers me in grad school when it was nice and dark and full. This time she said, okay, it's over. It's over. So, uh, but you gave us the $40 money. anyway, oh, so for, you already paid for it. Yeah. In fact, I stopped at one of those uh, one of those intersections and somebody gave a dollar through the window <laughs> in my car. I thought maybe it's time to shave. But uh, <laughs> the women have always been challenged. So women were allowed to wear blue jeans on Thursdays. flip-flops. flip-flops. You pay your forty dollars, <laughs> and so and so we've been raising. We raised like three thousand dollars for Special Olympics mm -hmm. in, 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 a, in a week's time. It's awesome. Yeah. So they're coming off, but the good, but the but that's the, uh, why he's sporting it. Very, very soon. That's as long as I can good. keep it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it looks great. So anyway, so welcome. Thank good you, to sir. Have you. And we'll talk about your district things going on in your district in okay. just a moment. As soon as we hear from Joe, and we'll do your background, Joe. Well, uh, thanks, Chief. I'm Joe LeDuke. I've been a Scottsdale police officer for twenty five years. Uh, spent time in each of the districts working in patrol in one capacity or another. And then a majority of my career was actually spent in investigations where uh, I supervised the special victims unit. Uh, I was a homicide detective for a time, worked in the intelligence unit, and most recently uh, led the um, special investigations section, which is comprised of our intelligence unit and our drug anti-drug efforts within the city and overseeing some federal task forces. Um, from there, I uh, also do things like teach for Northern Arizona University and their criminal justice program uh, and their intelligence program. And then I also present and write curriculum for a lot of nonprofits for uh, healthy teen choices, uh, everything from substance abuse to bullying, anti-bullying, and uh, things that really are affecting our, our youth. Very happy to be uh, now in command of a, a very dynamic district within the city that uh, has a lot to offer. You might want to explain for the folks what an intelligence unit is mm -hmm. in terms of for a police department. They may have a concept of what it might be. In the, the CIA. Yeah, so exactly. <laughs> but in terms of what is our intelligence yeah. unit do here? We have a concept in policing called intelligence-led policing, and it's truly working smarter, not harder. So what we try and do is identify or predict where crimes are going to happen by gathering intelligence, and that could be uh, analyzing crime trends to human source development, where we're talking to uh, professional sources uh, about criminal activity or even criminals themselves that choose they want to speak to us. And we gather all that information and our intelligence unit then uh, looks at the information, analyzes the information and then pushes that information out to the patrol officers in the districts to say, okay, well, our, our information that we're getting, these are the likely places where crime might occur and it helps us direct our efforts and manage our resources more efficiently. And to be proactive instead of reactive. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you guys are, uh, you guys have very different districts, but at the same time, it's not the kind of a district where the general public would like be intuitive as to what kinds of activities are occurring. For example, if you mentioned the downtown, people have an idea of a vibrant downtown that maybe a, not necessarily a 24 hour town, but an 18 hour town where people are residing, but also playing, shopping and, and, and working. Uh, you represent more of a more of a, a part of the city that is more residential, yes. and so and so it, it creates different kinds of issues, perhaps that the public may not be fully aware of. Mm -hmm. So, Chris, what kind of issues are, are you faced with in the Via Linda area? Uh, because it's primarily residential, we still see uh, crimes of what I call opportunity, where unfortunately residents uh, can sometimes uh, give burglars or, or people looking to steal objects, opportunities that they might not get otherwise, meaning they'll leave their vehicles unlocked at times, they'll leave their garage door open at nighttime, and some of these uh, characters will go around at nighttime looking for these opportunities and take advantage of that and uh, victimize some of our residents in that manner. Uh, we see that quite a bit uh, throughout the summer. It happens just regularly. Uh, obviously in the cooler months when the windows are open in some of the houses we see them go a little bit further and actually gain entry into the residence unfortunately so we ask our residents to be mindful of these things when they're out and about uh, because it's hot a lot of times when they go into a business they'll leave their windows down in their vehicles to kind of air out the vehicle but unfortunately people look for these opportunities and still objects within the vehicle so we ask them not to leave objects of value within the vehicle for that purpose as well as around the residence that might uh, give access to someone that shouldn't be there. You know, it's interesting, but I, don't, I have not seen a recent statistic 
involving open garages. Mm -hmm. At one time when I first got here, and it's been almost 15 years it is now, a big problem. It, was, it, is. it was like 60% yeah. of all of our crime mm -hmm. in Scottsdale was from an open yep. garage. On first and, entry. And, and we <coughs> thought, you know, if we could just get half the people to close, we could cut crime by a third. Exactly. And so we've seen crime going down. So I like to think that all of, our dis all of us talking about this and making sure the opportunity doesn't present itself, just to mm -hmm. think about locking your doors, closing your garages, will actually cut down and reduce crime because you've reduced the opportunity. And I know our officers in the district will actually knock on people's doors Very in the middle of the night and say, are you aware that your garage door is open and, and you know, please close it. And, and, and some of them don't know. Some of them, for whatever no, reason, the garage don't. opened up. Or somebody went by with some other remote, some what in the distance that somehow worked their garage, or they just forgot. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And with the problem with that and leaving an open garage door, it's most times there's a door, an interior door from the garage into the home that usually is not locked. So you're not only letting a, a bad guy come into your garage, but could potentially come into your home Get in access. the middle yes. of the night, which is something you don't mm -hmm. want to do. So well, it goes a lot further than just making sure you don't steal anything out of the garage. Absolutely. And, and I want to add, don't leave your car keys in, in your car, car just because it's in the garage. <laughs> we lose cars. You so get often. into the garage, and there's the car keys in the car. So where did you leave the car keys? It's in the car, right? Well, Perfect, that's easy. You know where they were. Just drive right out. <laughs> so, yeah, so we ask people to stop it. That, that's some really good advice. Okay. Now, now, you've got a lot of locked neighborhoods. You've got lots of gated communities. And so are you seeing the same kinds of issues? That is correct. We do have guarded gated communities uh, within the district. Um, however, that shouldn't give anybody a false sense of security. There's still uh, ways to um, get into these gated communities, uh, people following people closely through the gates, getting in on foot and whatnot. Um, so we, we can't let down our guard necessarily. In Scottsdale, we enjoy a very, very safe community, that's undoubtedly, but as Commander Hall said, there are crimes of opportunity out there. People look for easy targets. and. Um, just because we're behind a gate, we still need to lock our things up. We still need to close our garage doors and not present uh, those opportunities uh, to people. Absolutely. One of the things that I find in District 4, we have large roadways, long roadways uh, without signals. And so it tends to allow access to people driving fast or trying to get to their next appointment. And we talked about the heat of the summer and how much in a hurry we are to get our kids to the next event or uh, it's hot, so we want to limit our time in our vehicles. And so traffic, we seem to get a lot of uh, spike in traffic complaints mm -hmm. by district, and we take them very seriously. There's a number that citizens can call when they see a specific area where, where people might be driving too fast or running stop signs. It's 480-312-CARS, and they can actually uh, note the location on the machine that answers, and we will uh, spend extra time enforcing uh, those areas, contacting the citizens to educate them on what the speed limit might, might be. So that's another thing that truly affects uh, the, the District 4 area just due to its size and, and the size of the roads and how open they are. Freeway speeds, but they're truly not freeways that were that are present up in, in our district. So my, my advice to, to people who are living in the district, to the community, is just slow down, have that little extra patience because speed really does uh, cause catastrophic accidents sometimes. Yeah, I'm going to find those issues also on the side streets oh, absolutely. in the communities. And so um, neighbors are encouraged to call so we can, we can at least address the issues so that people will slow down. Good advice. What else is going on in the districts? Uh, we, we have a couple of really unique programs within the Via Linda district that I'm extremely proud of. Uh, we formed a partnership with the Ganey Ranch Homeowners Association whereby each quarter we, or they actually host an event called Coffee with Cop. So it allows uh, members of our staff to engage residents within that community, answer any questions they might have about what's going on, trends within the area, within their community, uh, problems such as what we talked about with crimes of opportunity, and just basic interaction to try to get them know, to know them better as well as allow them to get to know us and just form that bond a little bit better to help us make their community as well as those outside their community safer. And we do a similar project with uh, Raising Cane's Restaurant, which is a new location up on 74th and Shea. They approached us a few months ago when they opened that location and asked to do something similar called Lemonade with a Cop that they do at other jurisdictions. Um, not sure whether that would take off, uh, quite honestly, but immediately it gained a lot of traction and we, we host that quarterly as well. And the attendance to that event is uh, quite popular with the citizens. Similar type um, 
fashion where citizens are engaging with us and we're engaging with them. We try to bring out as many members of our specialty units as possible to answer questions, interact with the kids that might be there. Uh, we brought the horses out, the dogs. Very popular event and again it's gaining a lot of traction so we look forward to uh, that uh, relationship and building upon that with other businesses in our district and we're very proud of having that opportunity. So how do you advertise when that's taking place? That uh, sounds fascinating. We do it both through their website as well as on our social media pages through Facebook and Twitter and different things and then the districts each quarter put out a district newsletter and prior to that event we post that information on that newsletter so those that are on the email subscription will get that information. Uh, so we, try to, we do our best, obviously, to give that out via the officers on patrol when they interact with the citizens and invite them to those events as well as Citizens Academy and things like that. So we try to get that out as quickly as possible as, as, uh, as much. And uh, like I said, it's pretty popular right now. It's been well attended. And I was going to say, all the districts do the newsletter. Correct. Yeah. And so if I was interested in getting on the mailing list, how would I do that? You can go on our web page through the City of Costello and the Police Department and on, I believe it's on the right side of the page under the links it'll say District Newsletter and you can click on that and enter your email address and then you'll be added to future mailings. And then another thing that they can do is go to nextdoor.com because the PD has our website. Uh, we have a Nextdoor, a Nextdoor account. Each uh, neighborhood can have a Nextdoor mm -hmm. their own, but PD has one and we usually post things on that as well, besides Facebook. If you're not, on, I'm not on Facebook, so Nextdoor would be what I would use. Mm -hmm. Just there's many great opportunities to, to be in touch with the local police department mm -hmm. uh, and the local district station to feel connected and, and know that if you need to speak to someone, you're gonna, mm -hmm. we're gonna contact you. Absolutely. And we'll keep you aware of what's going on the latest trends. And we can also, uh, we'll have, uh, we'll put a list of the crime prevention officers, uh, their names and numbers. I think we've done it in the past, but we can do it after the show today. And what district is, who do they need to contact? So we'll, we'll, we'll add that information. Thank you. That's perfect. perfect. Any other programs going on in your district? Yeah, there's a few things that we're very proud of. During the summertime, uh, we have actually sent our police officers out to some of the summer programs, uh, venues like the Boys and Girls Club, to interact with the kids and uh, establish a rapport. And they take that opportunity not to not only to um, educate the kids on on things that are important as far as school safety, stranger danger, things like that. Um, age appropriately giving messages uh, from staying no to drugs and whatnot and making good choices uh, but it also um, allows our uh, officers to talk to the school staff uh, in the coordinators and uh, educate them as well as some crime prevention techniques um, it's a program called play and the officers go in and they sign in and uh, spend some time in, in some of these venues uh, so we've been uh, very successful at, at getting our officers out to do that and another thing I'd like to at least mention is our Block Watch program. Um, we are always looking for new Block Watch programs that collaboration with the uh, actual neighborhood leaders that are willing to go out there, see something, say something, uh, hold events, um, pass the, the best practices word along to the neighborhood as far as things like crime prevention through environmental design. Maybe it's cutting the trees back so we can see the front door a little better, lighting the house up our uh, block watch captains receive special training in that and can spread the word to help make the neighborhood just a little bit safer. It's a wonderful program, uh, absolutely responsible for um, uh, bringing safety to a community and uh, also a direct connection to the district. Uh, mm -hmm. Police officers as well where they have that extra that ability to communicate um, with them to talk about trends and, and what they're seeing. So uh, excellent program. Contact our crime prevention officer if they would like to be involved in the program or uh, Joy Racine uh, from Neighborhood Services. Neighborhood services. Mm -hmm. We'll add and her name. Excellent. Yeah, and if, we could, if I could add just one thing to that, it's important for our citizens to know that um, we have what's called GAIN event which is once a year every October and it's a national event where um, the different homeowners association the residents get together and they interact with law enforcement and, and again ask and answer questions. But what I'd like to make sure people are aware of is we don't necessarily have to wait for that annual event to take place. If you want an officer or a member of our staff to come and speak to you or your homeowners association at whatever meeting that you might be hosting, whether it's a special event or just a monthly meeting, we're happy to be a part of that. And we, we'd ask that you invite us because we do want to be able to be there to answer those questions that you might have. We don't want to wait until you have to call 911 and one of us to answer. 
uh, the call, we want to be out there proactively and answer those questions ahead of time to help you remain safe within our community. So we're more than happy to be a part of those programs, but, but please invite us. We have to be invited. Yeah. GAINS stands for Getting Arizona Involved in Neighborhoods. It's part of the um, National Night Out. National Night Out is usually spent in August because we're in Arizona. <laughs> one, of the, one of the rude awakenings for me coming from the East Coast was, when is National Night Out? Well, it's in October. But like you say, you don't have to wait till October. Mm -hmm. But if you are interested in organizing something uh, for that special night here in, uh, here in the city of Scottsdale and in Arizona, uh, you just go through neighborhood resources or even, Correct. again, the crime prevention officer to see how you can have a party and, and how the city will actually support you in that endeavor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so it's a great idea. So thank Thanks. you for that. So talk about the business communities. I mean, you already talked about a partnership with doing some of the local coffees or, or iced teas or <laughs> lemonades, whatever it was. Uh, talk about your, what we're doing with some of our businesses, because we have businesses, obviously, in both your districts. We do. Uh, one of the larger businesses within the Villalinda district is obviously, uh, uh, I'm so sorry. I'm thinking of the hospital, the new name. Oh, oh yeah, Honor Health. Health. Honor Health, Health yes. on Shea. Okay. Obviously, a big hospital Because we've our been district. here forever, yeah. and it used yes. to be called SMH. So Correct. <laughs> you got to just but, keep uh, up with the times. Yeah, but we have a wonderful partnership with Honor Health. And so uh, continually, we interact with their staff. We work continuously with their security staff okay. to make sure that there are plans in place and contacts in place so in the event that there was an emergency of any kind that we're able to gain entry into the uh, hospital as well as work with their staff hand in hand to deal with whatever takes place. So we're really fortunate to have some wonderful members on that staff that we've worked with for several years. And just recently we were able to uh, get what's called, similar to what we have, our access keypad cards. They were able to provide those to some of our supervisory staff within the district so we can gain access to any of the doors within you know 24 hours a day. So it allows us to get in and Getting quick. Getting quick. Especially in the event if you need to get happens. in quick. Correct. So that's that's a great partnership that uh, we formed and we'd like to continue. Another new partnership that we're very proud of is recently the Veterans Administration opened up uh, a clinic within the, the district that's obviously off-site from the Veterans Administration downtown that serves some of our veterans in our community. And it's a satellite office, so they do uh, small type uh, things and working with some of the veterans and we've engaged in partnership with them and it's a great opportunity for our staff some of our officers that stop by on a daily basis and interact with the veterans that are there to be served and it's a wonderful opportunity to have that interaction and just hear and talk with them about their experiences and uh, it's a great partnership that we're really proud of uh, being a part of. And you have a mosque in your district. Correct. And, and we've got a great partnership and relationship with the yes. mosque. Uh, th that's something, that, again, that we, we uh, participate in quarterly meetings with them. Uh, we engage with their uh, members of that community. We do as uh, much as we can to be visible and present at all their events to make them feel safe within our community. Obviously, with everything that's going on, there's concerns, and we want them to be a part of Scottsdale to feel safe and, and be able to engage in, in their worship and not worry about what might take place because we are there to protect them. So, you know, we talk about businesses, and I think one of the things we want to, people who are watching this that have to either work for a business or actually own a business is that we are very much interested in, in their safety and security as well. Absolutely. And if there is an interest in, in having us come out and do a security walkthrough for them or, or develop that relationship, mm -hmm. I know we don't want keypads for everybody to get into every business and every, mm -hmm. every nook and cranny, but it's important that they know who we are and we know who they are um, in terms of being in our communities. Um, uh, so we have that relationship. So I would encourage businesses that are watching this, they are concerned about things that may be going on around the mm -hmm. country and questioning, like, you know, how safe are we here and how will the response here work, uh, to reach out and give us a call. We'd be more than happy mm -hmm. to have that conversation. Absolutely. Thank you for that. This report is home to many large corporations that employ thousands and thousands of uh, people. And we have, a, right to your point, we have a very, uh, engaged in a very proactive effort to get our crime prevention officers out to do <coughs> security assessments. But we've even taken it a step further where we will uh, pl actually be involved in the planning of um, what would happen if uh, some big emergency happened, whether it's a natural disaster or some type of workplace violent, uh, violence event we actually go over their plans with them and say, okay, if this does happen, this is what you can expect from the police department. What are your policies? What will your employees be doing? What's the best way to communicate with you? Even down to where we form a command post to uh, 
uh, and how would they would direct their employees to areas of safety. So um, we're very, very proactive about doing that. We, we contact our businesses and, and if, if the business hasn't been contacted, it, we would like, we do encourage businesses to call us and say, we would like to meet with our, our district police officers and, and discuss plans as well as undergo a security assessment. We also have a lot of retail within uh, not only the city, but within our district as well. And we love to partner up with them, collaborate with them on trying to address any retail theft type uh, problems, um, what's called a, a shrinkage as far as their uh, stock shrinking, they call it shrinkage, mm -hmm. it's a new term I've learned. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll work with them to try <clears throat> and uh, harden the, the target, so to speak, where we'll make suggestions, come into a full security assessment, make suggestions on how they can prevent loss from each of their uh, retail establishments. And we've uh, been very effective in doing so. So we have our part to play in that. We can advise them on their part, but it's the partnership that makes it truly effective. And, and uh, we realize uh, Thanks, good things guys. from that. Thank I really, you, really appreciate you being our guest yeah, this week. Really great. wanted to focus on a couple of districts to see what's going on in districts, because our philosophy has been district commanders are actually the police chief of their designated area and they're providing all the services at the local area and they're approachable the local area and you guys are just great examples of that. Yeah, Thank you both you. very much for being our guests. Appreciate it very much. That pretty much takes care of this month's program. Yes, yeah, another so one. On the other side of this is maybe a little cooler, maybe not. <laughs> it won't We're be still cooler until October. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Anyway, we want to thank you all for spending Thank time you. with us and being with us this month. And we wish you the very best during the, during the summer season. Have a great time. Enjoy your vacations and time off. And uh, look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for being with us. Be safe.